Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again with another video. Made a video the other day, but I actually think a few people got confused in the concept that I was uh, trying to show. And what it was, was using the headstock with a keyless chuck with a piece of br uh, brass disc mounted. And you can face that off and you can get less than a half a thou run out. All right? Now, half a, less than half a thou run out is pretty bloody good. Now, if you were to put a large object into the jaws of a lathe, like this brass disc, and we'll pop that in, the surface on the back touches the back plate. So if you face off here, and then if you turn it around and face off on both sides, it'll be parallel. So much so that it'll probably be as good as a half a thou. So my last video wasn't about putting a large piece in a chuck and using the back plate uh, so that it's parallel. It was more of putting a thin disc in. And that's what I'd mentioned about if you had a thin disc like this and you wanted to make sure that the front and the back was parallel within half a thou. Because if you put this disc in here, it's not going to be uh, straight. It's going to wobble all over the place. So you, you're not going to be able to face off on it. You can't push it at the back of the chuck. It's too thin. So how do you actually get it really good? That's where this comes in. And also, you can use this. We've got this little space that has a keyway in it, right? Now, the front and the back are parallel, and it's used in a gearbox. So we want to make sure that it's parallel. And let's just say I've got to take 10 thousandths of an inch off that. Well, if I put that into the chuck and just have a little bit sticking out, about a mil, and just lightly tighten that up and turn the lathe on, it's got the wobbles. And you're going to find that with any disc that you put in. All right? See so if we can zoom in on that. Going to be hard to see, but we'll try and you can see that wobbling, right? Which is great. That's what I wanted to demonstrate. You got the wobbles. Okay, so then you turn around and say, oh, no worries. I'll just loosen that again. I'll move it and put it in a different spot. Still got the wobbles. You can do that. For quite a long time and you may get it reasonably good but this system or this method that i'm going to use is bring the tailstock disc right up lock the tailstock in a position wind the disc up so that it touches and re-loosen the chuck get my fingers now release this start up look how straight that is this method can work and have an accuracy of a half a thou if not better on the tailstock right depends on how good your tailstock is and and your keyless drill or your jacobs chuck and provided that you took your time and turned this down and did a good job, uh, you can get that sort of accuracy of less than half a thou. And I've checked it with the dial gauge, right? So that's how I know how accurate it is. Always use a dial gauge. So there is another way that you can actually get that level. So we'll just loosen that again. And just... Pop it back in. 
Uh, you can see the wobbles. It's got the wobbles. Okay. There's a little roller that I made. A lot of people refer to them as a burnishing roller, like this, right? What I want to do with this is take this up to that uh, piece that's in the chuck, that spacer with a keyway. And as long as you don't over tighten the chuck, Right, now, we're going to, you see the wobbles in that, as soon as you tighten this up, just check, hang on, just making sure that the carriage is not, I've locked the carriage. That's pretty good. Wobble's gone. We'll do that again. This system really does work well with the ball bearing. Really does. All right, move that out of the way. Now, all as I did was nip this up a little bit. Now, there's a good case of the wobbles. All right, that, that's... That's something great to show you. Look at that. Barely touched it. Now, that's what I was explaining in my previous video. And people just turned around and said, Oh, mate, you can use the back of the chuck. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, some people just yeah, don't get it. As you can clearly see... Both these methods work really good. Now, if this is a critical job and it's going in a gearbox or something else and you're looking for very fine clearances, you need a dial gauge and you'll need to make sure that it's parallel so that the front and the back are parallel with each other. You can check that with a micrometer, measure the width. Now, the longer the part that you've got, the easier it is to, to uh, make sure that you've got it nice and square in the chuck. Now, the other day, for my chainsaw grinders, I made a lot of these discs. The little washer that comes with them is only a couple of mil, and it's made out of soft metal. And when you... It's only a six mil hole in there. So when you put the cap screw in there, it doesn't really sit against the grinding wheel and have it true. There's always a little bit of inaccuracy. So to make sure, let's just say that this was a, a part of something else, right? And I've just nipped that up a little bit because what I want to show you is how that's got the wobbles. So there's the wobble, in and out, in and out. Again, I've got two methods of solving that problem. I can use the bump roller, right? So I use the bump roller. Now, when you use the bump roller, make sure that you don't over-tighten the chuck. And that's just a matter of bringing the roller up like that. Lock the carriage in a position. That's pretty good. And because this is mounted all the time, uh, you've got to make sure that you don't push the disc past the chuck because you won't be able to face off. But if I'm going to face off there, I'm only going to face off uh, in the centre so I can get away with that. So that's one method, right? The second method, and we'll just uh, move the carriage out of the way, is using the disc again. So we'll just set that up. Okay. Now, the easiest way to get this beautiful and parallel is just wind the tailstock till it touches the disc. Then loosen the chuck off. Put your fingers in there. Your little finger right in the middle. 
I can feel the hole and just tighten that up lightly. All right. Now, you can even get a torch and you can shine the light, but I'll guarantee you that that is perfectly square within a half a thou, all right? So you can put the dial gauge on it, and now, before you put the dial gauge, just nip it up a little bit on each jaw, like that. Put your dial gauge on it. I can quite easily get that less than half a thou. Depends how much time I want to spend doing it. This is just something that I made up. Yes, you could use the quill of the tailstock. Uh, you could. Uh, I don't know. It's got a few little dints in it. It's been knocked around a little bit, so I just prefer to use the disc. Uh, yeah, because the discs, but yeah, look, you can use the quill, but if you do, you've got to make sure that it's beautiful and parallel. In most cases, it probably will be. So, yeah. But the whole idea of this method is that it's good for small stuff, all right? Small stuff like this, where this will go through the hole in the back plate. So to make sure that the front and the back edge are parallel, that's where this will come in. If you've got something as big as this, and you've got a beautiful flat surface on here. I've used this. Don't worry about that mark there. That's been used for something else. But if you've got something that's big that can stick out of the chuck, you can face it off, turn it around and face it off the other side. So, yeah, when you've got something that's longer than the width of the chuck, you don't need this mechanism. You can use, and that's provided that whatever you're turning is bigger than the hole that's in the chuck. Because if it's smaller, then this can't sit against the face of the chuck. So that's what it's all about in keeping uh, the system dead straight. Now, what I wanted to show you was I can get 0 0.02 or even less on the dial gauge running it across. The needle barely moves. So that's actually excellent. Really happy with that. That That is excellent. I could zero it right on the zero, but there it is, right on the zero. And get it right on the zero. There it goes. Right, there it goes. Look, barely moves. Coming a little bit this side of the zero. Pretty good, eh, people? Look at that. And that's what I was saying about using a disc, this brass disc like this, that when you put that up against a small little piece, like... Uh, the steel disc that I made, is that your front and your back can be parallel within a half a thou. Half a thou is fairly small. You can actually even get it less than half a thou. It depends on if you do turn that brass disc, you want to turn it at high speed and you really want to have your cutter set at the correct angle and take it nice and slow, and you'll get a, a better finish. So the better the machine finish that you've got on this brass disc, and the other thing to mention is that when I'm winding this across, don't forget that there's tolerances in this uh, slide, right? So this slide's not perfect, even though the gib's been tightened up a little bit this has a bit of movement in it. So to get less than half a thou uh, is pretty bloody good. Uh, so that's the way uh, I set things up uh, when I do small pieces in the chuck because it's just too difficult to get something within a half a thou 
without doing it this way. And a lot of people maybe don't get it. So hopefully if you've got a little tiny disc like this that's less than 10 millimetres and you put that in your, your chuck and you want that to be parallel without the wobbles, you either use the burnishing roller or bump roller, whichever you want to call it, or you use the disc like this. This will probably give you a better result, but the burnishing roller can give you just as good a result. But if you're a hobbyist or a machinist, you should know that to check your work, you really need a magnetic base with a dial gauge on it to check your work for accuracy. I hope that information helps. Uh, and it's fairly straightforward. So next time, if you've got a disc like this, could be for a part for anything, you need to take a few thou off it, and you want to make sure that it's parallel, and when you put it in there, you go, oh my God, it's got the wobbles on it. So hopefully uh, uh, that information helps, especially for the beginner, because most experienced machinists are going to know that you can either make something like this, and this is the other thing, for every job that you do on a lathe, it doesn't mean that you've got all the necessary little jigs and bits and pieces. A lot of the times you've got to make these tools yourself. And that's what I've been doing with this lathe, been making a lot of different tools for different jobs so that uh, it makes it a lot easier and I've got better accuracy. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.